Okay, welcome. Thank you for uh, attending and watching this uh, use case that Kaz and I would like to present to you today. Um, as an introduction, what I wanted to just give you an idea about is, as we heard at ONS, uh, there's a lot of desire by operators to incorporate open source into their networks. Uh, they're demanding that of operators. They see great value uh, to be able to incorporate open source into the networks um, to enhance SDN, NFE offerings, and many of them are very quickly adopting these technologies. And many of them are getting very involved in open source activities, uh, OP, OPNFE, ONOS, Open Daylight. Um, there's a variety of new projects that are coming up as well. Um, and so we're spending a lot of time prioritizing uh, these, these types of efforts. One of the areas that's been a bit lacking is on the OSS side, the operational support systems. Uh, they uh, work well, but they continue to be proprietary. They continue to be difficult to uh, upgrade, to uh, add new services. It takes weeks or months to be able to um, insert new uh, services so they can be able to compete and keep up with their business. And so that's one area that we'd like to spend just a few minutes talking to you about today is uh, opening up uh, this operator support system and including orchestration in that. Um, there's one project that we've been hearing a lot about. Uh, it's a new project. It's called OpenO, Open Orchestration, under the Linux Foundation. And this new effort has had many partners come together to be able to uh, work on this area and be able to incorporate pieces of operational support systems while still not disrupting it so that we um, realize that you know there's many proprietary elements of an op operational support system um, and yet still being able to make it so that we can uh, make it much more agile and insert new services. So we feel that the best way to uh, kind of introduce this uh, area, this, this uh, demo, is to look a little bit more on um, orchestration itself. But what does it really mean? And one of the best uh, ways, the analogies that we've found that you can uh, look at orchestration is looking at a orchestra itself. So an orchestra, of course, uh, has a conductor, someone that's gonna orchestrate these different musicians. Uh, they each have their different elements. They each have their different uh, instruments. They oftentimes like their own type of instrument. Some may prefer Yamaha, some may prefer Gibson, or some other type of a, a, a make and model of a particular instrument. Um, if we look at these musicians as controllers and the uh, conductor as the orchestra, we can see kind of how this would, uh, how, what we, how we define orchestration. So they, they have very distinct roles. So the musicians, uh, play their instrument. Uh, controllers, they insert rule information, flow information into, into the, uh, the devices or into the domain. Uh, and orchestra, uh, orchestration uh, orchestrates these different controllers, different domains end to end, uh, much like a conductor does. Uh, in an orchestra, we have many different elements. We have many different sections of an orchestra. So you have typically, you know, 70 to 100 different uh, musicians in a orchestra, depending upon the type of music that's being played, depending upon the forum, the size of the, the building. Um, you have a brass section, a woodwind section, percussion, uh, a variety of different elements that all need to come in harmony and come together. Um, and this is very similar to a network. You have many different purpose-built solutions. You have a need to bring these different elements together, network, storage, compute, uh, and have them come into, uh, in, into harmony. And so an orchestration system needs to be able to see this global view, see all these different controllers, these different proprietary uh, devices, um, and find ways to bring them all together to uh, have resources that can um, be used in certain areas where the demand may be higher. Sometimes you have a need to focus your attention on a certain area. So in an orchestra, uh, oftentimes you have a musician that may not be 
typical in a woodwind section or a brass section. Uh, you may have a guitar or maybe even drums or a harp or something like that. Um, and you focus the attention on that device. All the resources go into that. In fact, the, the conductor quiets oftentimes other people down, other musicians, and people focus on this, this other musician. Um, this other musician um, has the same sheet music that everybody else has. Uh, that sheet music can be thought of as, you know, common information uh, data models. They all have that same playbook um, and they know uh, when the conductor instructs them when to spin up and when to spin down. Again, using the same analogy, we, we, we look at this uh, orchestrator that we're working on now uh, to, to do this. Again, having a view, an end-to-end -end view of all these different controllers. It doesn't matter if it's, that controller is an ODL controller or a no-nos controller or open control controller, especially we have with, when you have an intent framework. Um, which you're able to uh, ha be able to communicate upstream to an orchestrator. These are all the things that we're working on within um, this OpenO project. So now, this is nothing particularly new. Uh, for those of you that are involved in standards, you realize that in the IETF and the MEF and Etsy, there's been a lot of work on orchestration devices. Uh, it's been mostly specifications. Within the Linux Foundation, our focus is on delivering code. So. We have a variety of partners in this OpenO uh, project. We've got um, Ericsson's in there, F5, uh, Huawei, uh, China Unicom, China Telecom, China Mobile, um, Gigaspace is Intel. Um, uh, you get a variety of these partners that all want to solve this orchestration pro uh, problem, particularly for OSS systems that are very complicated, and do it in an uh, open uh, carrier-grade way. So this is what we want. We want the entire orchestra to be able to be viewed, to be able to uh, be, uh, from an end-to-end -end way, uh, be able to be uh, orchestrated by the, uh, by the maestro. And uh, last slide before I turn it over to Kaz to talk a little bit about a particular use case. And this is a slide that's been shared uh, in this so far. It just kind of gives you an idea, particularly in the Linux Foundation, of the different uh, pieces across the stack that they've been able to uh, uh, fill in. So recently, for the orchestration layer, they created this OpenO project. Um, it's, it may be debatable, but for the most part, this now completes the stack, where we have a we have open source projects, at least within the Linux Foundation, that's able to work on a variety of uh, different scenarios and um, meet our customers' needs. So hopefully, that gives you a little bit of idea of what we mean by orchestration. So Kaz, um, hit it. To continue on the same thought, uh, when you put an orchestra together, uh, the way you present your services is by giving concepts, right? So you go around, you put concepts together, and you present it. And that's the equivalent of having services, right? So in 5G network, we build this complex infrastructure deploying the latest technologies, NFV, SDN, ICT, and uh, it's the orchestrator that, that organizes all these elements and makes them dance just in the right way to support these different types of services. Now, what do we mean with services? For example, uh, you want to use the same infrastructure to interconnect a number of fast-moving smart cars, for example, right? So you have uh, self-driving self cars, vehicles that are moving across the road, and you want to use the same mobile infrastructure to orchestrate it. So obviously, you have to take the radio spectrum, you have to take your RAM, you have to take your core, you have to take your servers, you have to take all this infrastructure and orchest orchestrate it in such a way so that these fast-moving vehicles can communicate with each other. That would be a concept that you offer, a use case or a slice of your infrastructure. Another one could be you want to use the same infrastructure to monitor a number of smart homes, right? This is an IoT use case. Again, you want to use your software system, the orchestrator, to put the right piece of infrastructure together so that you can support that use case. 
Now, the intention is to focus on the service and the use case and not see the orchestrator so much, right? So you want to listen to the music and not uh, see the, the orchestrator. And a good orchestrator would actually abstract all the complexities away from the end user so that they wouldn't see it. They just get the service. They get the, get, get the slice of the network end to end as if it was custom built for them. If a use case needs very small delays and fast reaction time, it will slice the network just so that the end users get that service. If another service needs high bandwidth, but the delay is not so critical, again, it gets orchestrated accordingly. That's roughly uh, how it should be done. Now, every 5G network use case is equivalent to writing a piece of music and offering that concept, right? Now, we made it look so easy, right? Like playing music, but it's indeed very difficult, very complex. You're talking about multiple tiers of infrastructure, multiple domains, multiple equipment, multiple different types of networks. You're talking about radio spectrum, different access technologies, RAM, different core, multiple layers, different service layers. So all that needs to be organized, orchestrated, managed, controlled to support the set of service parameters that you need for the specific use case. And that can be very complex. Now, the complex infrastructure will be transported into a number of slices. And each slice, again, just like a concert, dedicated to a piece of music, is supporting a specific use case. And for that use case, it's optimized. For that use case, the infrastructure looks like end-to-end -end integrated and customized. One of the slices can be for ultra-short delays, Another one could be for high bandwidth. Another one could be designed for high scale. For example, in a stadium, right? The number of users can fluctuate from a few to a few tens of thousands within an hour, time limit of an hour. And all those users in a stadium want to download videos. So it has to scale up very, very, very fast. And, and the slice has to be optimized for that. And that's the thing that the orchestrator has to do. So it has to support scale, it has to support different parameters, and it has to do it fast. The same way as an orchestra con consists of different types of instrumentations, we are managing here different types of technologies, right? We are deploying SDN, NFE, information-centric networks, ICN, goes on and on. So these are each one a very complex domain that is used to make the 5G programmable, make it flexible so that an orchestrator can act on it and actually program it and slice it so that it can support those types of use cases. So you can say that the orchestrator is the layer that sits above all these technologies and can understand them, can talk to them, and can order them to do exactly what it wants to do. Just giving you an example, want to give an orchestra, want to give a concert, the concert is an IoT, and I define the service that I want to do, let's say uh, self-driving cars, that's the use case. I want to create a slice to support that type of use case. So what you do is you define this, and your service has a topology. Topology means it has multiple components. Obviously, it's a complex service composition. So you're talking to radio spectrum, you're talking to RAM, you're talking to core. So these are the different components. And each component, again, has more in it. So you have a hierarchy of interrelated components that ultimately are mapped to your infrastructure, to your environments. 
that's the model that you create in your orchestrator. And for every type of slice that you support, you create one of those models. And as you are introducing new use cases, you're creating those models, and the rest is basically automated. Now, if you ever ask yourself, what are the main components in an orchestrator like that? You know, how is it built? This is a very high level picture of how they are built. You see a um, schema that repeats, actually. Uh, so everything that you have out there, all infrastructure, radio, RAN, core, is being modeled in form of objects in a database. That's the lower database in this picture. So all your resources, the complexities of your resources, are abstracted away from everything north of it. So every vendor, every domain is represented by a model. From the top, every service type, again, is represented in form of a model. Now, each service type could be a slice, could be a concept, very complex. The model itself could be very complex. Now, you have two complex models, north and south, each one with independent topologies and components. So you need a flexible, mapping engine that takes every, net, every element of a model and maps it to another element of the lower mod, model. And it is this mapping that applies some logic and intelligence to it. It's the mapping that makes the network do what you want it to do. Now, once you've done that, that's not enough. This entire thing has to be wrapped in a process automation engine. That's the topmost layer. The process automation, automation engine basically enables you to execute very complex set of processes because a provisioning process could be very complex. This entire thing is wrapped in APIs. It means you can interact with it, you can talk to it. It means a customer can interact with it with a portal or with another piece of software or an application could order it to do what it wants to do. So all that together makes the orchestrator. So with that, I would like to wrap up the talk, and if you have any questions, more than glad to entertain. Yeah, policy is part of it, definitely. The moment you talk about multi-tenancy, right, and then we talk about slices, we mean multi-tenant slices, then every tenant will have its own policies, right? Um, and the system has to understand policies, you have to be able to define them and apply it to the tenants. Um, that's definitely one key component of it. Now, I didn't show you all the different subcomponents that has to be there, right? Obviously, there is a controller also involved here, right? There has to be an SDN. Um, Ecom, controller, policy, all those things have to be involved, definitely. I would just add that that's actually a really good question as far as, you know, how the strategy of deciding how you want to implement an orchestrator. Because there's some providers like AT&T that have e-comp. They may decide to create their own orchestration platform internally um, and maybe open source it after doing so. Whereas they're, the alternative is to have like an open source community like OpenO and some others uh, it was mentioned MEF has a LSO, lifecycle service orchestration. There's, there's different ways you can go about doing that. Um, and, uh, you know, we've just chosen to work on orchestration within this uh, Linux Foundation project. Any other questions? Thanks for not leaving us hanging. Thanks for being here. <laughs> All right, see ya.